It's Wednesday, the 9th of June, 2021, and welcome to a special Water Action Platform broadcast. Now, following the successful Digital Twin Tour that we did last December, where we looked at the system that Agia had developed in Brazil, today we're going to Valencia in Spain to hear from Idrica. Now, Idrica's Digital Twin is based on the Goagua technology, which they've installed in the water network in Valencia, and it connects their hydraulic model to real-time data. So in the session that we're going to do now, you're going to see three things. You're going to hear from the people who developed and operate the twin. You're going to see firsthand how it works. And best of all, you get the opportunity to ask questions. So if you want to raise any questions, this is live. So just click on the uh, purple triangle to the top right hand side of your screen. You'll open up a chat box and you can submit the question there. At the end of the, um, at the webinar, uh, I'll then be asking the questions directly of the key people. Now, before we get into that, however, here is a welcoming statement from the chief executive of IDRICA, Jaime Barba. Thank you, Piers, for the wonderful introduction, and thanks to everyone for joining us today. Hello, my name is Jaime Barba, and I am the CEO of IDRICA. IDRICA is an international company that provides services and smart solutions for water utilities. We came about from the success of digital transformation of Global Omnium, a Spanish water utility with over a century of experience and present in over 400 cities. Global Omnium's digital transformation started over a decade ago. The Goaiwa platform was developed during this process to increase efficiency in the utility. Last year, we decided to set up Idrica to market Goaiwa and offer express services to water utilities. Today, we are present in Latin America, Pacific, the United States, Africa, the Middle East, and Europe. Our experts analyze the needs of each utility and find the right solution for each one. We guide them along their digital transformation journey. At IDRICA, we believe that collaboration and innovation are essential. That's why we joined the Water Action Platform last year, so our knowledge and experience can help utilities during the pandemic. Many utilities have now realized that smart water solutions can improve water and energy efficiency and increase resiliency. The Goaiwa platform includes our digital twin, a pioneering uh, tool in the world of water. This incredible solution is revolutionizing the industry. Today, my colleague Pilar Conejos is going to show how the Goaiwa digital twin is delivering exceptional results to Global Omnium. I hope you enjoy this live demo Thank you so much and welcome to our virtual digital twin tour. Welcome, Jaime. <clears throat> we now come to Pilar Conijos, uh, who, from everything I've heard about her, is the real brains behind this digital twin. Uh, Pilar, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Yeah. Excellent. How are you? Yeah, very good. Thank you. Very good. So for those people who, who don't know you, um, let's start with, can you tell me a little bit about your background? Yes, of course. I'm a PhD hydraulic engineer. I have more than 20 years of experience in the field of water. Uh, I have been for a long time the head of water network control at Global Omnium. And I also a part-time assistant professor at the Polytechnic University of Valencia. That's very good. I like the assistant professor bit. Um, so, uh, well, let's start with um, the journey to create a digital twin. When did it begin and what was it that made your, your exec board, your, the, the leaders of, um, of the company, think that this was a good investment? Yes. Fifteen years ago, we had to face several challenges in our water distribution network. Uh, that included an increase in demand due to population growth, uh, long droughts, and also infrastructures near the maximum capacity. So we had to be uh, very efficient and we had to minimize as many risks as possible. So we realized that mm, we really needed a system or a platform that could help us uh, to make decisions both for daily operation and planning. Uh, it was at that time when uh, we realized uh, the great potential of the hydraulic models connected with the scale, with the, with the real time. And um, this is what we did. Um, we were able to use all the simulations for um, 
uh, tested and validated uh, any solution uh, before being implemented in the real system because uh, we can simulate the behavior of the network under any condition and at any time, even in real time. It was around 2007, and at the same time, we started a digital transformation in our company. And so uh, we um, have much more information about the real system. And so integrating all this information with hydraulic models and advanced analytics led us to what is today uh, our Royal Digital Twin. So I take two things from that. I take, I take the fact that, um, first of all, this was driven out of a business need rather than a sort of corporate ego. It wasn't, hey, we're going to build a digital twin because everyone else has got one. It was there was a definite sort of need from the business. And secondly, 15 years. This is, you know, this isn't something that you develop overnight, is it? It's a it's a long, hard slog. Um, well, thank you for that. So we're, we're about to see the digital twin. But before we do, I have to ask. With projects like these, there's always a problem which occurs that you wish you'd known about at the start. It's a sort of unknown headache that occurs in every project. What was your unknown headache or, or were you that lucky enough project to have a, a, a headachelessness, headachelessness <laughs> development process? Well, <laughs> I'm afraid I wasn't so lucky, but <laughs> I'm not sure if that's possible. <laughs> so seriously. Uh, when we started to develop our digital twin, we really had information, but this information uh, was in different systems already implemented. So we have to access this information and to integrate all the information. This is not easy. The development of our platform was key because this platform integrate, concentrate and normalize all the information. And today we know that this is the first step that we have to do when developing a digital twin. Yeah, well, I'm sure that will resonate with uh, with many utilities and many people who are watching this. Well, um, <clears throat> thank you for that, uh, Pilar. So we're now going to go to hear specifically uh, about how the digital twin operates, and then we're then going to come back and do uh, a Q and A session. So, as I said at the beginning, feel free to add your questions to the chat box, or indeed vote on any of the existing questions which are uh, are already there. Um, otherwise, sit back and enjoy the show. Now we are going to see the digital twin that is used in the control room for operating the water distribution network to Valencia and its metropolitan area. I am right now in this, con in this control room and due to COVID-19 protocols, I have to wear a mask. First of all, we are going to see the main figures about the system that is managed with this digital twin. Valencia and its metropolitan area has a population of 1.7 million people and there is a single network to supply the whole system. In this network, there are two drinking water treatment plants. They can produce six cubic meters per second and today the average consumption is three cubic meters per second. To distribute water to the system, we have first a main water network we can see in this slide in red color. And after that, we have a secondary network inside the city and inside the 51 municipalities around the city that form the metropolitan area. The whole system is operated by Global Omnium and the main administrations involved are the City Council of Valencia and the Metropolitan Administration called MC. The main water network is 200 kilometers in length. Um, there are uh, other elements in these networks like uh, tanks, pumping stations, uh, a lot of sensors like pressure meters, flow meters, level tanks, and the diameters go between 1,600 and 400 millimeters. The secondary network is largest and in this case is more than 2,000 kilometers in length. In this control room, uh, there are two important uh, systems to manage uh, the water distribution network. One is the remote control system that allows us to have here a lot of information. And the other one is the digital twin that we are going today. A digital twin is a virtual copy of the real system that represents its behavior and serves as the basis for experimentation. So we can try any new idea, any new change, uh, before making the decision in the real system. So we can minimize a lot the risk and we increase 
a lot the, our confidence in, in the operation of the network. With the digital twin, we can uh, analyze and monitor the whole system. We can simulate its behavior under other conditions. And as a result, we can improve the efficiency and the performance of the system. The digital twin as a virtual copy of the real system has to be continuously paired with the physical system and has to be very quite well calibrated because it has to behave like the real system. For that reason, uh, to develop a digital twin, we need uh, three main components. One is a data-centric platform that integrate, concentrate all the information that we have uh, from the physical system. We need also hydraulic models in order to simulate the behavior of the network. And finally, advanced analytics in order to explode all the potential of the digital twin. Here we can see the architecture of the Guaywa digital twin. Uh, as many utilities uh, nowadays, there are a lot of information about the physical system. Uh, all utilities nowadays have uh, GIS where they have all the information about the assets. Uh, there are also SCIDIA sensors that provide and give a lot of information about the hydraulic performance of the system. There are also smart meters that can provide the uh, user's consumption. And of course, uh, computers, maintenance, management system that every field operation that is performed uh, is registered. So if all this information is concentrated in a big data platform and is connected with hydraulic models and advanced analytics, what we have is the YWA digital twin. So we can say that with the digital twin, we can take benefit of all the information that we have uh, of our real and physical system. Here we can see the main figures of uh, our digital twin that we have for operating the, the water distribution network of Valencia. Uh, the digital twin contains the main uh, water, dis water distribution network uh, and all uh, the regulating elements like tanks, pumps, valves. It's connected in real time with a lot of sensors, 400 pressure meters and 200 flow meters. And some of this information uh, is used for uh, impose the control rooms and other is used for contrasting or for calibrating uh, the digital twin. The digital twin works upon a hydraulic model that runs simulations in real time. But what can we use uh, a digital twin for? A digital twin can, uh, can be used for planning and for operation. For operation can be very useful because uh, we can simulate the behavior of the network under any condition, real condition or other conditions, that means what if scenarios. And we can simulate the behavior uh, in real time, at any past time, or even in, in the next 24 hours. Uh, so with this kind of simulations, we, we can know beforehand uh, the consequences of any action or any decision that we have to make in the real system. So we can in increase a lot our confidence in the operation. With a digital twin, we also can forecast the behavior of the network for the next 24 hours in order to see that everything is going to work properly. And if not, uh, we can decide uh, which action we have to, to take in order to avoid problems in the next 24 hours. It's a very helpful tool uh, as a decision support system for emergency conditions because we can simulate the behavior of the network under any emergency conditions. And in case this emergency occurs, we can confirm any action before uh, making a decision. And we can, of course, uh, uh, have the uh, emergency plan response developed beforehand. We can also plan uh, important works in the network that, for example, uh, an important repair or the connection of a new infrastructure. And we can decide uh, which day and um, which hour is going to be better in order to minimize the consequences uh, to the users. And finally, the digital twin uh, gives us a lot of information, a holistic information about the performance of the system, uh, because we can know what's happening at any point of the network thanks to the simulations. For example, in our case, we are calculating what's happening in 10,000 points of the network only with 600 
values, real values, real uh, meters. So really this is very um, powerful uh, because we have very, very control uh, our network and our system because it's like if we had uh, 10,000 sensors in the network that give us here the information in real time. The digital twin can be used also for planning because we can um, define uh, the infrastructure needs. We can define also the infrastructure uh, required to uh, supply uh, the demand in the future and to attend any emergency conditions. Um, we can define in, in advance the operation of the new infrastructure and of course we can define the commissioning stages for these new assets that we are going to have in our system. Guaywa Digital Twin is a scalable platform, so it uh, can be uh, implemented in any network. Uh, we have uh, this digital twin uh, de uh, deployed in other, in other city. In this case, it's a touristic city uh, with a very difficult operation because there are a lot of people in, in summer and there are very few people in winter, so uh, the operation is not easy. In this case, uh, the digital twin contains 200 kilometers in length, uh, contains the main regulating element, as in Valencia, and is connected in real time with 50 pressure meters and 40, pressure me um, 40 flow meters. The digital twins, we can say that have reached the water distribution system area to stay. Develop and maintain life a digital twin is nowadays an objective for every utility and data and tools available nowadays make it possible. Thank you. And now we are going to see a live demo of Guaywa's digital twin. This is how Guaywa digital twin looks like. Uh, we have two kinds of representation for this digital twin. One is based on synopsis view and the other is based on geographical maps. It's very important to have different representations according to the users. For example, for an operator or for a, per a person that works in a control room, it's more useful to have a representation based on synopsis view, like an Iscaria. Uh, because they can operate a digital twin in the same way that they operate uh, their SCADA. Uh, and for example, for other people like staff or planning engineers, a representation based on maps is going to be more useful because they can have much more information and they are used to work with this kind of information. Here in the representation uh, based on site notice view, uh, it looks like an Iscaria, but there are some differences with Iscaria. The first one is that if we go to a telemeter variable, we can see uh, two values for every telemeter variable. The saved uh, uh, value uh, is the real value that uh, the sensor is, trans is transmitted. And the other uh, value is the simulated uh, value, the value that is uh, calculated uh, by the hydraulic model. If the model is very well calibrated, uh, both uh, values have to be uh, very similar. And if not, it's because something wrong uh, has happened in the network. For example, a big leak in the main water network, or maybe a device like a pump or a valve that is not working properly. We are simulating the behavior of the network uh, at any point, so we have a lot of information. We can see in the, Hadjali, in the, in the geographical map all the information that is calculated by the hydraulic model, model. So we can see at any pipe uh, the flow or at any point uh, of the network uh, the pressure that we have right now. We can take benefit of all this information in order to have uh, KPIs for our network. Uh, in this screen, we are saying, for example, uh, some KPIs for the pressure quality. Uh, we can see how is the velocity quality in, in our network and uh, what are, what are the, the head losses quality. We can also see some balances so we can we can see here how much water is coming from the drinking water treatment plants and how much water 
is coming from the tanks. Another great difference with Iscadia is that uh, we can run a what if scenario. So we can interact with the digital twin. We can stop it and we can see uh, how could happen if right now we close a valve in the system. We are going to simulate the behavior of the network. Right now, if we close this valve, And here we can see uh, the most changes that we have in our system. In, red, in yellow color, we can see the main differences. And uh, here uh, we can see, for example, uh, how the pressure is going to be different. And uh, we can see also that we are going to need much more water from this drinking water treatment plant. So we can know beforehand this information and we can take actions in order uh, to avoid the consequences and, and in order to be ready for the next 24 hours. We can travel also in time. We can go to the past and we can simulate the behavior of the network other day, for example, the 12th of May. And now we are going to simulate what the performance of the network was this day. We can travel in time, so for every hour, we can see the value of every variable. We can also show graphs. For example, here we can see uh, the evolution of the real pressure and the evolution of the calculated pressure. We can, we can see how the differences are very, very, very little. Uh, we are aware at any moment of the level of, ca of uh, calibration of the network because, or the, or the hydraulic model, because we can see the difference between the real value and the calculated value. Also, we'll have this information. Here we can see the accuracy of our simulation. 98% uh, uh, of accuracy in pressure, 93 in flows, and 96 in, level, in levels. That is really a very great Calibration is very important because uh, if we want to trust uh, the digital twin, we, we have to know the level of accuracy of the simulations. And here we can see other information. Here we can see how much data we have filtered. What does it mean? Uh, a digital twin needs real, uh, really uh, inf uh, good quality of information because if not, we are going to, to have grown simulations and we are going to have grown insights. This is the reason that we have to filter or clean data. Here we can see that for this day we, we had to filter 1.7% uh, of the data and, the, and here we can see the reason why we, we have to filter. We have developed uh, algorithms to, have auto, to do automatically uh, this task. Uh, we can also uh, could try any new operation in the past in order to see if this operation could work better. And um, really, uh, simulating uh, scenarios in the past is something very important for training operators or for training to uh, to improve uh, the performance of the system with other uh, operations. We can also travel in time and go to the future in order to see how the behavior of the network is going to, to be the next 24 hours and we can see uh, if with the uh, current settings and with the demand forecast uh, everything is going to work properly. So we can see all the variables in the next 24 hours we can go to a tank in order to see how it's going to behave. And here we can see that everything is okay. We could, we could also try any, any other setting in order to see that uh, if it's going to work properly. For example, we could try another setting and we can see what 
what is going to happen if we reduce the water that is coming into, into this tank. Now we could see the evolution of the level of the tank. Oh, oh. We can see that uh, this setting is not going to work properly because uh, at 6 o'clock it's going to, to be empty. So we have seen uh, how uh, Wayward Digital Twin looks like, uh, how we can interact with uh, this digital twin, and uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, this live demo. Excellent. Thank you for that. Thank you for that, Pilar. Um, we've got lots of questions coming in. Hopefully you've been able to see some of them uh, while that was playing. Um, I suspect there's a bit of uh, utility envy maybe going on now in the background. People have seen what you've presented and thought, I want it for myself. Uh, and maybe we can talk a bit about how they can do that. But let's uh, let's get into these questions. Um, so the first one's come from Elise, and this is, um, do most modern utilities have the major components necessary to develop a digital twin, or is there a significant further capital outlay that's required? Mm -hmm. uh, I think today um, most utilities have the minimum information that we need to start developing a digital twin because um, today uh, we usually have uh, GIS, uh, Skidia, some sensors deployed in the network. There are other utilities that even have other systems like work orders or even smart meters that can improve the accuracy of the digital twin if you have this information. So uh, it's true that uh, you don't have a digital twin, you are going to need some investment. Um, the necessary investment is, uh, it depends uh, on the level of uh, digitalization in your company. Okay, now on a linked question, we had one that came through uh, from Daniel Rodriguez. It says, uh, what do you need if you're to build, what would you need to build? Um, oh, sorry, my screen's gone funny. What would you need to build for a working simulation if you didn't have any sensors? And clearly, if you don't have any sensors, you can't build a, dig a digital twin. Is that right? You need, uh, with any sensors, you cannot uh, develop a digital twin. You need some sensors. You need some data, uh, there, obviously. You need some data. Uh, you can start with few data, and after you can uh, make grow, or you can make your digital twin grow with more and more sensors. But you, you need that first minimum information, minimum digital information is the first step that you Good. have to do. I, I was, I was thinking, how could you build a digital twin if you didn't have data? But you've got that, yeah. Once you've got the data, yeah, you've got no. something to play with. So um, this is, I think, the most popular question, which is, again, around sensors. How many sensors? Uh, does one need to develop a robust, and I suspect that's the key word is here, it's around robustness. How many sensors are needed to develop a robust digital twin and where ideally would you install them? It's, it's a question very difficult to answer because <laughs> it depends on everything, on each network. Uh, the number of sensors uh, that work in real time that you are going to need depends on how complex is your water distribution network, it uh, depends on its size, on the number of regulating elements, the range of elevations. Uh, but we can say in our case, uh, we have one sensor every one and a half kilometers that are sending information in real time to our digital twin. Okay, so that feels like a fact that we need to lock into our brains. One sensor every one and a half kilometers, every mile, basically. And I assume that if you had critical assets like trunk mains going under railway lines or near hospitals, you might have you might have more sensors, but it, as a broad rule of thumb, one sensor every one and a half kilometers. Excellent. All right. Um, there's a couple of questions that all come in the same um, same area. So they sort of say, um, um, what are the most appropriate systems in which to implement a digital twin? And I think that's around saying, um, you know, is it the water network or the above ground infrastructure or or you know on wastewater or on drinking water i think that's where the question's coming from and actually that does lead to another question that i saw here around energy can a digital twin be used to optimize on a daily basis the set points of pumps and reservoirs 
in order to save energy? So there's sort of two questions there. One, where can you apply a digital twin? And two, could you apply it to energy management? Yes, really with a digital twin, uh, we can develop a lot of use cases. One of these use cases is trying to reduce uh, energy cost or, or the amount of energy that, uh, uh, that we are consuming. Uh, with a digital twin, we can define the pumping schedule for the next 24 hours, uh, considering the price of energy at any period, uh, and also uh, trying to uh, keep under control all the hydraulic parameters, like flows, velocities, water rate, level tanks. Um, with the digital twin, uh, we also can operate all the systems, like pumps, uh, in an efficient way. So we are going to reduce the amount of energy that we are going to consume. All right. So. So just to play that answer back, so basically you can do a digital twin anywhere where you've got so much data coming in that the, the human brain on its own isn't able to easily um, interpret it. And that's why you have a digital twin um, and that actually you can then tweak it to answer the exam question that you want it to answer. So you could say, I want you to um, make sure that all the water's in the right place at the right time as its number one priority or you can say i want you to maximize energy output or carbon footprint or those sorts of things correct yes of course that is excellent <laughs> good it's always good to check i know what i'm talking about um uh, now um let's go to another one here so um how many cents do we need oh here's a good one on calibration i think i saw a couple of questions around calibration um, how often do you have to calibrate a digital twin? This question is very important because, uh, as I said before, uh, the digital twin, the hydraulic model, has to be very well calibrated. Uh, in our case, uh, uh, we launch a slight uh, calibration every time that we run or we simulate the behavior of the network in real time. Uh, we launch this slight calibration. And the most important thing is that we are aware of the level of our calibration in any simulation that we run. We know uh, the accuracy of our digital twin. So when this accuracy, when this uh, calibration is getting worse, we will launch a stronger calibration. Uh, that happens more or less when we include important assets uh, to our digital twin from time to time. Yeah, and uh, actually on a linked question, very similar. It came from King Ramos at uh, Maniliad Water in um, in um, uh, in Manila. Sorry, um, he put, "How often do you calibrate a digital twin?" And then he also put, "Is there such a thing as real time calibration?" Yes, you know, can you, time. Yeah, sorry. can you calibrate the digital twin every day as as it's operating? Yes, every time that we run a calibration in real in real time. We launch a slight calibration, so we are calibrating our digital twin with all the information that we have in real time. And we launch this stronger calibration only from time to time when we add new assets. But we, we, uh, we calibrate in real time the, the hydraulic model with all the information that we are receiving. Excellent. All right, one last question. Um, and this is from Adi Lev Tov, or that's how he's referred to on, on, the, um, on the chat. And he's put, how has your operation changed after the digital twin? For example, maintenance and sensor maintenance, people's operation. Um, do people believe in the digital twin? Do they trust the digital twin? Is the digital twin changing how people are operating? I think is, is the, the crux of the question that he's asking. So in Idrica, how's that worked? Yes. Really, people trust a lot the digital twin. And I think this is key <laughs> for us. Uh, really, the way we work today is very different than the way we work in the past. Uh, people trust the digital twin, people have in improved a lot their skills, and for us, um, it's something essential for operating the water distribution network. Uh, I can imagine an uh, other way to operate our water distribution network nowadays. Yeah, well, that, that's brilliant. Thank you. Thank you for being on the spot with those questions. And uh, thank you for the full answers. I think what Pilar's just highlighted there is, is the, the multiple challenge here. You've got the sort of logistical challenge of gathering the data and installing the sensors and making sure the sensors are calibrated. You've got the IT challenge of making sure you've got a platform that you can interface with, which is clearly the work that 
um, Idrika has, has put substantial effort into. And then there's also the cultural challenge that utilities have got. You know, you've got to have the right mindset and behaviors within your organization if you're going to adopt a digital twin. Otherwise, it just becomes a sort of another asset that, that, that the company has that never quite uses. Um, that was absolutely brilliant, Pilar. Thank you for um, sharing those insights. Um, with that, what I'm going to do is if anyone's got any other questions that they want to raise, um, either email them to me or send them to Megan and we will work with Pilar and the team at IDRICA to make sure that there are some answers presented. This video, um, this recording will be available on the Water Action Platform website. And if anyone wants to learn more about how you could implement um, a digital twin in your own organization. I am certain that Idrika would love to hear from you and would love to be talking to you directly. Um, with that, I'll bring this uh, session to a close. Keep asking questions, keep sharing, and keep safe.